Social media, who doesn't use it? Whether it's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, even TikTok. We've all seen buttons with usernames or follow me's on any series you do. They are a great visual reminder to visit those pages and see what your favorite content creator is up to. Today, we're going to learn how to make buttons like this. Before we begin though, my name is Richard. I make how-tos and videos alike to help you get started making better content on your channel. If you enjoy these kind of videos, leave a quick like and subscribe to be one of the first when new videos go live. Or follow me on Twitter and send me memes. Hey! Also, let me know in the comment section what you would like to see next. Those who just want a quick button to use without the hassle of building one, I've linked a fusion composition, including all the logos you'll need, in the description box below. You can start adding them to your videos right away. Gameless intro plug done. Grab some coffee, let's get building into DaVinci Resolve. In the effects library, open the effects and drag in a fusion clip of 5 seconds and open the fusion tab. First up, a quick tip. Name your notes, this will make things easier. Alright, let's go. We need two ellipse nodes, each connected to a background node. Make the inner ellipse node colored and smaller than the outer ellipse, which you want to be white. Now add a merge node. The colored ellipse should be in the foreground and connect the white ellipse to the background. Shaping the ellipses can be made easier by right clicking on the height value in the inspector tab and selecting expression. Then click the plus button and drag and drop the value to your width selector. This parents the value to another and makes for perfect circles every time. You can color the circles to your liking, but I also added the brand color hex codes in the description box below, so you can just copy paste them right into your composition. Now add your social media logo, also in the description below. Another merge node and resize it so it looks nice. Connect the logo to the foreground and the previous merge to the background. This is your basic logo section. To animate it, we need to add a global transform to it. Just add a transform node after your second merge node and you'll be able to transform all the items previous to that node. Select the transform node and add keyframes for the size and angle values at frame 0 and 30 by clicking the little diamonds. Head to frame 0 and turn the size down to 0 and the angle to minus 900. So make the whole thing spin and size up to the point we want it to be. Now open the spline tab. Click fit to view and select one of the two values we just added. Select both keyframes and press S on your keyboard. This smoothens the animation out and enables you to add more speed or have the animation ease in, etc. Edit them as you wish. And here are the curves I used. We will do this for every keyframe value, so refer back to this part as I won't be mentioning it in detail later on. To get the text rectangle, add a rectangle node connect it to a background node and merge it in after the global transform. Change the color to white and size it up to where you want it to be. If you also want rounded colors, change the corner radius to your liking. Now get ready for some keyframe madness. Select a rectangle and set keyframes for the center X and Y and width values at frames 40, 55 and 70 and go to frame 40. Set the width to 0 and push the rectangle to the left of the circle so it slides in when we press play. At frame 55 we want our rectangle to start building itself up. So we'll also add a width 0 here. Frame 70 should retain all the original values you used while reshaping the rectangle, so you should have a complete animation now. Working backwards like this guarantees you get the desired result every single time. Edit your keyframes in the spline tab again and make sure you only added a single value at a time. As I said in the beginning, naming your notes appropriately helps here. Now just add another merge node next to the merge 3. Add a text node and a background node like this. 
add it to size, etc., and give it a nice color. Make it look something like you would use. To have the text jump in, set keyframes at frames 60 and 70 for the size. Go back to frame 60 and change it to zero. Then edit them keyframes in the spline tab again. To animate everything out, repeat all the steps we just went through and count the frames in reverse from the last frame on, basically like counting backwards. This wouldn't be a how-to by me if you wouldn't add something extra. Go to your third merge node, click on the settings menu in the inspector and enable motion blur. Set the quality to 10. This makes all the shape animations a lot more realistic. After that, a little more sparkle, add a soft glow before the media out tab. Set the gain to zero and add keyframes to gain for 130, 150 and 170. Now add a value at keyframe 150 that you like. Smoothen it out in the spline tab and we're done. Head to the delivery tab, give your file a fancy name and choose a folder you can find it in afterwards. Make sure to activate individual clips, set the format to QuickTime, the codec to DNxHR and the type to DNxHR 444 12-bit. Now tick the export alpha option, add it to the render queue and start rendering your first social media button. You can repeat all of these steps with the different logos and different colors to get all of the buttons I just showed in the intro. Wow, you made it this far! If you enjoyed this how-to, let me know on Twitter what you'd like to see next. Can be built next? Or any other topics for that matter. Also, leave a like and subscribe with notifications on. I make new videos every other week, every week, something like that. Sure. Time for another coffee. Later. Come on, you can make the jump. That's... <laughs> <laughs> it's your problem now. Still here, huh? Haven't had enough? Click on the left or on the right video to learn how to make an animated webcam overlay for your stream.